Hello, my name is Konstantinos Donas. I am vascular surgeon in Münster, Germany. I am here in Spain, in Barcelona, attending at the Circe meeting 2019, and I'm really glad to introduce you uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Taneva, a vascular surgeon from Madrid, Professor Frank Fermassen, University of Kent, Belgium. Hello. Hello. We are here and we will speak about the critical issues on chimney endografting, a round table of uh, Radcliffe vascular. And uh, I would like to start the discussion with you, Frank. Um, nowadays, we have new evidence about uh, the chimney endovascular technique in the treatment of complex aortic pathologies. Uh, we have new evidence, uh, we have the new guidelines of the European Society of Vascular Surgery uh, highlighting the utility of this technique as an alternative approach. Um, what is your current practice? Do we, based on your experience, can you tell us in a summary form good indications for chimney EVAR? Well, uh, Constantinus, nice to be here. Um, it's obvious that uh, the neck is uh, one of the major criteria um, for successful uh, EVAR procedure. Um, and especially the quality of the neck, which includes uh, length, uh, diameter, um, uh, conicity, uh, different uh, uh, properties. Um, and it's, uh, in our practice, Chimney has um, found its place actually in, in um, some of these necks where on one hand, EVAR is um, not really the uh, solution, a durable solution. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, fever might not really be indicated. Um, I think uh, chimney has, uh, certainly has its plates, uh, let's say in those necks, um, below 10 millimeter to 15 millimeter, um, where EVAR is uh, not according, it's not implanted according to the instructions for use. Um, and um, on the other hand, uh, can uh, indeed, uh, let's say, diminish the need for fever. We cannot forget that fever, for instance, is not possible in those patients that need to be treated emergently. Um, emergent treatment includes bailout situations. That's obvious. I think there is an obvious indication for chimneys in bailout situations. Um, also in those patients where, uh, for instance, because of the diameter of the uh, aneurysms, we do not want to wait for uh, custom-made uh, fenestrated or branched endoprosthesis um, and where those that are morally available do not suit very well because it's only in a small percentage that these can be used. Uh, so that's the second uh, big group. Um, a third group, uh, in my opinion, are also those patients uh, in which, well, there is some doubt um, because of their age, because of some comorbidities, uh, whether it's really cost-effective to implant uh, very expensive uh, prosthesis and, and which we can help very well with um, a cheaper solution. solution, yes. I do not want to say by telling this that uh, uh, GFR is, is um, uh, the poor guy's solution or alternative for, for FIVAR, but um, in this uh, world where, you know, some economic uh, arguments might uh, come into play, this might be uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. a solution. Indeed, very nice. Um, you highlighted the ind good indications for chimneys. Well, in general, the philosophy of this approach is that we are using off-the-shelf devices. It means devices which are available in the stock of the hospital. And I would like to ask you, Dr. Taneva, um, speaking about chimney EVA, do you have an overview of the current recommendations, which devices based on the literature, based on your practice and experience from your hospital, uh, seems to have a nice conformability, minimizing the issues like gutters, persistent type 1A endolix. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Donos, for having us here and for your invitation. It's, it's nice to be at this round table with Radcliffe. Um, yes, exactly. This is the Achilles topic, I think, and the Achilles heel of uh, the chimney technique which devices should we use and uh, what's the recommendation. Because we have seen from literature that we have some different and diverse results for the topic. From the Pericles registry, for example, we have some good midterm patency and very nice results. But then, of course, there are some suboptimal results with uh, different used uh, devices. 
That's why we went a bit further and uh, we did some uh, in vitro testings, which, are, which we are currently still ongoing and doing. Uh, we constructed a very sophisticated in vitro model following the CTA of uh, a treated achiever patient. And uh, we conducted several device combinations to see which devices go better with which end graft. So out of all the tested devices, it seems like the best performance up to now is Advanta and Endurant. And this is actually the recommendation uh, followed up after Protagoras study as well. Mm. Uh, that's why device combination is very important for the performance of the chimney technique. And it's not the same to use one device or another, and we can't expect the same good results. Thank you. Yes, one very important point, Frank, is as uh, Dr. Taneva highlighted, the device combinations. One other critical issue is the degree of oversizing. Uh, we have to keep in mind performing chimney means that we will deploy parallel and outside of, um, of the main abdominal device additional abridging device, a covered stand. So we have to have enough material to wrap up the uh, chimney graft. And I think this is very important to plan and size correctly. So for you, from your practice, uh, how important is the oversizing for this technique and what is your recommendation in this uh, field? Well, yeah. as you said, it's very important indeed. You know, um, at first sight one could think uh, because of the additional material that you would need a smaller device, which is not yeah. true yeah. because uh, you make the curves around the, um, the chimneys. Um, so therefore this oversizing is, uh, is an important uh, uh, element in avoiding the creation of gutters, which are kind of the Achilles heel of um, uh, the chimney technique. Um, so, um, depending on the number of um, chimneys you implant, uh, we additionally oversize by three millimeters per chimney. Frank, very nice. So, you highlighting the importance of oversizing. As you said, 30 degrees should be the oversized aortic stand graft. But sometimes we have more than one involved target vessels. So from the anatomy, from the morphological point of view, we, would, we should deploy more than one chimney grafts. And now is the question uh, if we would expect more events, more issues, if we perform multiple chimneys versus single chimneys. Could you provide some information, Dr. Taneva, in this topic? Exactly. We recently evaluated uh, this performance, the performance of triple chimney within the Pericles registry and uh, we have some very promising results. The paper is upcoming very soon. Um, and it seems like the patency is quite good, but of course, it's, they're not the results of single or double chimney nowadays. So this analysis confirmed that the more chimneys we are doing, the higher the risk of uh, complications of events of type 1A endoleaks. And slightly worse the results, exactly. And I think this is a very clear message, uh, dear Frank, because um, there is no doubt that the using of the shelf devices uh, give us the possibility to do it uh, the same day, but we have to be very careful if we um, deploy several chimney grafts because, they ha as we have seen, the risk is higher of having e events. Oh. Um, from, from the um, sizing, sizing and planning, planning uh, point of view, do you have some recommendations as anatomical constraints to avoid to perform chimneys? Well, based on what you say, and uh, I totally agree, we, we are doing, uh, let's say, on an elective basis up to two chimneys. Um, one, the three chimneys we would only do, let's say, in, in the real urgent or uh, bailout situations. Um, so there are some anatomic constraints for, for doing uh, chimneys uh, indeed. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, in view of what I just said, um, when the superior mesenteric artery is about at the same level of the both renal arteries, this is a problem. Uh, of course, the uh, chimneys have to be implanted from above. Uh, so if there are excess problems uh, in the arm or whatever, then uh, uh, although it is rare, it, but it does occur, uh, sometimes you, um, it's, it's impossible to perform this technique also. So you, you highlight the, the importance of evaluating the access from above yeah. before we plan chimneys. So in case of soft plaque, uh, yeah, like it's important to shake the aorta, we like, should... Like it's important to evaluate the aorta when you come from below also in, in exactly. simple EVAR procedures. Yes. Dr. Tanev, another question, and I think very often we heard from colleagues 
they performing uh, CT scan evaluation and they seeing that uh, we have a persistent gutter related type 1A endoleak. So what should be the recommendation? How can we overcome this issue? Well, there are several issues about the gutters. Um, and at first, uh, we should know that in the first CTA, if you perform it one, two days after the procedure, maybe there's still impairment of the blood and you can still see some type 1A and leaks. So uh, patients uh, wait and let's see the next control CTA probably one month after the procedure. And then um, recommendation for oversizing, always look for 30% oversizing in order to wrap around the chimney stands and achieve at least 15 millimeters of sealing zone at the neck. But sometimes it's not possible due to the diameter of the patient and due to the um, stented vessels. So we can't achieve this type of sealing. That's why sometimes we can see these gutter issues. Um, in order to solve the gutter issues, if you have a persistent type 1A endoleak, we recommend to extend proximally if needed and otherwise embolize probably using onyx. That's our experience. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I, uh, in this context, I have to highlight uh, the ongoing prospective uh, multi-center trial and shunt evaluating the performance of Chimney Ivar in uh, almost 20 centers. Professor Torcello is the principal investigator of this trial, and uh, I'm uh, very, very optimistic that we will uh, have a very, very important new data very soon, uh, because it's very important to see from this point of view uh, how often we observed type 1A endoleaks at the completion and geography and what happened. And our experience showed that in the majority of the cases, they're disappearing. Yeah. So thank you, Professor Fermas and Dr. Taneva for the feedback, for your opinion about uh, this uh, appealing uh, approach. There is no doubt that uh, we have to learn, we have to evaluate the limitations of the technique we have to evaluate cases uh, which we had a suboptimal result. And uh, evaluating this, uh, we can only provide uh, better performance, better results. In this context, we highlighted the importance of the degree of oversizing of the aortic stent graft if you perform this technique. We saw indeed also in the Pericles registry analysis that low volume cent centers have the tendency to have a less oversizing compared to high volume centers. But this is important to highlight that, the, that from the design, from the philosophy of the technique, you have to have enough, as you highlighted, Dr. Taneva, uh, material to wrap up uh, the chimney grafts. Very important point. The second point is the creation of a sufficient new sealing zone. I would recommend personally 20, 20 millimeters because we know that we cannot be perfect during the deployment and you are going to lose a few millimeters. So therefore, it's better to go for at least 20 to have your 15 millimeter link, new ceiling zone and length. Um, in, a, in addition with this, it's very important the, the combination of the devices. So the combination of the Endurant with the Advanta showed that uh, Endurant with the nitinol endoskeleton conforms very well with the proximal part, rigid part of the Advanta. So with this nice conformability, you have a lower risk, as we have seen in uh, the in vitro tests, of persistent at least gutter endoleaks. There is no doubt that we are more than glad to hear the new uh, evidence, the new findings from the Enchant trial. In this context, I would like to thank you again, and I wish you a nice stay in Barcelona during the series of meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.